God's grace, his mercy, his peace to you. From God our Father and Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Wonderful word from our Lord. Jesus heals the deaf and mute man. Abundantly beautiful is this gospel for us. For Jesus unstops this man's ears so that the man can hear the very word of God which saves. And he loosens the man's tongue so that the man can pray, can praise, and bear witness to the salvation he has received from the living God. That's exactly why Jesus healed you and healed me. You were once deaf and mute, just like the man in the gospel reading today. You were born this way, conceived in sin and by nature an enemy of God. You lack the ability to hear God's word, for your ears were stopped up with sin. You lack the ability to declare God's word and to declare the praises of the living God. For your own tongue was bound up with sin. And just like this deaf and mute man in the gospel, you were powerless to change your condition. What could the deaf and mute man have done? What could he have done to change his condition? Nothing. Nothing at all. Same with you. Same with me. You could do nothing. Left on your own, you would still be spiritually deaf and mute to this day. But something, something happened. A miracle occurred. Like the people in the gospel lesson who brought the deaf and mute man to Jesus, someone, someone brought you to Jesus. For most all of you, this happened when you were but an infant. For others, this happened later in life. But either way, either way, you were brought to Jesus by someone to be healed by Jesus. And just like with the deaf and mute man, Jesus delivered. He took you aside and brought you to the font. There at the font, in the waters, joined with God's word, he spat on you. Water combined with the holy word of the living God and he said to you, Epaphatha, be opened. And at that, at that very moment, your ears are opened and your tongue loosed. You were healed so that your ears could hear the saving word of God and your tongue could pray, could praise and bear witness of the salvation that you have received from Jesus' perfect life and from Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. All of this for you. When the deaf and mute man in the gospel lesson was healed, we're told that he spoke plainly. But that word plainly in English really does not convey what is said in the original language of the Greek. The Greek word here is orthos, which means rightly. Well, if you've ever had to yourself or bring your children to an orthodontist, What does the orthodontist do? He makes the teeth right, rightly put together. It's the same word used for that orthodontist. It's the same word used when we use the word orthodoxy, which means right praise or right reception of praise from God. You see, it's not just that the man could now speak plainly so that others could now understand what he was saying. That's not the gist of the text. It's that the man now spoke rightly. His mouth and ears were now opened in order that he might both hear rightly and speak rightly. So it is with you. The great physician of your soul has healed you that you might both hear and declare his holy word rightly. You are no longer spiritually deaf, no longer spiritually mute, 
but have been given the awesome ability to hear and speak the very word of God. You should be like the people in the gospel lesson who zealously proclaimed to all what Jesus had done. You should be telling everyone you meet, Jesus has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. He lived and he died for me. He healed me. I am saved. Come, let me take you to Jesus so that he can heal you too. But too often you don't. Instead, way too often, you live as though you haven't been healed at all. Sometimes you use your opened ears to listen to the deceptive philosophies of the world, to listen to the destructive temptations of Satan, to listen to the sinful desires of your own flesh. You often use your loosened tongues to spread gossip or slander your neighbor, to tell lies, to make yourself look good, or behave as though you're still spiritually deaf and mute, as though Jesus has not accomplished anything in you at all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this ought not be. The words of St. James when he declares, these things ought not be so. Repent. You are a baptized child of Jesus Christ. Live like it. You know better than to think that you can mock God and render to him just lip service. Stop believing that you can uh, here and now pull one over on God as if you can keep him from knowing those sins that you think you commit in secret. God knows. Of course he knows. He knows how your ears love to perhaps hear the latest gossip. How your tongues love to spread it to others. You're not keeping anything from God. Repent. Repent and stop using your loosened tongues to grumble about the conditions in your home, the conditions in your workplace, even the conditions in your congregation, especially when you're not willing to be a part of the solution. Stop pointing your fingers at others. Repent, for the Lord did not open your ears, and the Lord did not loosen your tongue to be used for such evil. You know that. I know that. You're a baptized child of Christ. Live like it. Now stop and think about this. What if God treated you like you deserve to be treated? What if God simply matched your efforts and served you only as much as you serve him? Just the thought of that should horrify you. But you needn't be horrified. For the good news is that God does not treat you like that. God does not treat you like you deserve to be treated. And he doesn't simply match your efforts. Instead, amazingly, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to the world so that he might treat Jesus like you deserve to be treated. Instead of punishing you, God punished his one and only son. Instead of forsaking you, God forsook his son. God sent his one and only son to take upon himself all your sins, all the sins ever committed by anyone at any time in this sinful world, all upon himself on the cross. There, his holy, perfect, righteous son, who knew absolutely no sin, became sin and suffered the consequences for sin, death, separation from God. And all this for you, sinful you, to pay the price for your sins that you might be forgiven, that you can go free. This same Jesus who lived and died for you, who took you aside and healed you by opening your ears and untying your tongues, ever remains here for you. This gift he's given to you in the words of the holy baptism, his word of life, the word of God. 
He promises in his word to be with you always. He makes good on his promises here in this holy house during divine service. Here, Jesus is present to heal you time and time again, to hear your confession, to grant you holy absolution. For here, Jesus continues to put his forgiveness in your ears and his very body and blood on your loosened tongues to strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith that has eternal salvation, that your lips may declare his praise here in his house and out there, out there in the world. Come then, dear brothers and sisters. Have your ears open to hear the word of the living God and your tongues loosened to declare his holy praises. Leave your sins here at the altar. They are paid in full. You are free, free in Christ. Free not to do as you please and continue in your old sinful ways, but free to live as a baptized, forgiven child of the living God. Free, set free to serve Jesus and to serve him by serving your neighbor. Free to be his witnesses to this dead and dying world. Free to tell others about what Jesus has done for you. Oh yeah, the people in the gospel tonight, they were charged by Jesus not to tell others about the miraculous healing done by Jesus, for his ministry was not yet complete. And he didn't want people to know him as simply the faith healer, but as the Savior of the world. But now, it is finished and Jesus wants you to tell everybody, go, go therefore and use your loosened tongues to declare what your open ears have heard. Tell everyone you can all that Jesus has done, that Jesus has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And don't just tell, but follow the example of those friends there in the word of God read tonight in the gospel. The family of the deaf and mute man, they're listed tonight. Bring others to where Jesus is. Bring him, them here to his holy house during divine service that Jesus might open their ears and loosen their tongues through his holy word and sacraments. That's how true evangelism is accomplished. Not simply by telling about Jesus, but by bringing them to where Jesus is so that Jesus might heal them. I pray as we prayed tonight together that the Holy Spirit enliven you by the power of the gospel to truly be used as Jesus' instruments to bringing others to him. In Jesus' holy and precious name, for we have ears for hearing, tongues for speaking, to praise our living God. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of Almighty God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto everlasting life. Amen.